Late night show host Jimmy Kimmel has just called America disgusting after visiting Japan for the first time. Let's run the clip. Traveling to Japan, I realized that this place, this USA we're always chanting about, is a filthy and disgusting place. <laughs> we were in Japan for seven days. Not only did I not encounter a single dirty bathroom, the bathrooms in Tokyo and Kyoto are cleaner than our operating rooms here. <laughs> Everywhere you go, the bathrooms are clean, they don't smell bad, they have those toilets that wash you from the inside out. <laughs> and not just in a hotel, restaurants, bars, truck stops. I went to two truck stops. I swear to God, the bathroom's cleaner than Jennifer Garner's teeth. The cleanest, <laughs> beautiful. And it's not just the bathroom, there's no litter. But they clean up after themselves. They bring their garbage to their houses. And it's like... The whole country is Disneyland, and we're living at Six Flags. Boom, Andrew, this is making headline news. Of course, a lot of conservative commentators have picked it up, but it just went viral in general. Let's read the headline. Jimmy Kimmel says his trip to Japan last week made him realize that the U.S. is a filthy and disgusting country. Andrew, he went on to call Japan Disneyland, whereas America is Six Flags. Anyway, guys, we're going to break it down. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Out Sauce, smileoutsauce.com. It is available for pre-order. Andrew, um, this is a pretty basic assumption, right? Like anybody who's been to Japan, just watch one of those 4K walkthroughs of any part of Japan. You could notice this to be true, but I guess why did this go so viral? Is it because Jimmy Kimmel is just a big late night show host and him saying it is different than somebody else? Well, I actually have a theory. And my theory is this, as America gets worse, people are going to be looking at places like Japan or maybe the Netherlands, things that seem to run a lot better. And they're always going to compare that to America. But I think it's funny that Jimmy Kimmel is this famous, this rich and just realize this at this age. But like I think he, it's isn't it because he had never been to Japan before, though. Like, I noticed no, that a lot I'm more saying, people are going to Japan in 2024. Like, we've known this because we're Asian. Yeah. But I'm saying the non-Asians are just finding out about it because they're they're making their first trips, trips to Japan this year. Well, tons of non-Asians have actually known. But I think this more speaks on Jimmy Kimmel and how he how untraveled he is if he's just making this joke now. Now, I don't really know what the precedent is. I think it's just because there's so much talk about America getting worse. There's more homelessness. There's more. There's less laws. There's more lawlessness. So that's why everybody wants to bring up Japan, even though we all know Japan has its own problems. So I don't know. I think it's, I just think it, it came out of nowhere. Yeah, I agree with you. And I think that Jimmy Kimmel almost represents this guy who came from the man show, who was like almost like a really middle America guy who became moved to LA, probably started meeting Japanese people who said, yeah, I will set up a trip for you in Tokyo. And then he probably was like, oh, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm far from my man show days. And then he has this realization to your point. Um, Obviously, Japan is different on so many fundamental different levels, you can't even write all, them, write, write all of them down, Andrew. There might be a thousand reasons, but of course, maybe the conservative commentators that are roasting Jimmy Kimmel, who's a big liberal, Andrew, are gonna point out some reasons, but ignore other reasons, right? Mm. So that's one thing that I've noticed. Um, I'll say this, man. Japan is so different. The kids are safe going shopping by themselves when they're like 10, 11, 12 years old. I mean, Andrew, uh, the kids take down all their custodian duties at school. They don't even really have janitors. The kids clean the school. Mm. So it's already completely different. Their level of collectivism, their level of pride for their country. Just Japan is the cleanest place I've ever been on planet Earth. Right. So I guess what I'm saying is, is I always think it's interesting the way America looks up to, like, for example, Japan. Uh, they look up to Germany when they fought wars against Japan and Germany in World War II. Is that weird? Oh, they didn't just fight wars. They bombed Japan. So this place that you love so much or that you admire so much in a weird way that you're like, oh my gosh, Japan's so clean. It's such a peaceful society. you like... Well, you nuked it. Yeah. And, Literally, that's uh, what Godzilla Minus One is about. But, or Godzilla in general is about the aftermath of the nukes. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, also... A lot of people are pointing out 99% conviction rates and in the judicial system in Japan. If you get charged with a crime in Japan, they have a 99% conviction rate of guilty. Yeah. Um, also, nuclear families. Um, right now, as of 2020, 
54.2% of Japanese families have a dad, a mother living in the same house as the child. In America, it has dropped to 37%. Uh-huh. So obviously, it's different in a lot of different ways. I will say this, though. If you look at Japan and Taiwan and Singapore, okay. these are three island countries in Asia that have similar metrics. Like Japan's metrics, Taiwan's metrics, and Singapore's metrics are similar, really low crime, good economics. They produce a lot of valuable things that the rest of the world needs. But I'll tell you this, I noticed that in Japan and Taiwan, the, the number one thing holding everybody together is almost like the culture and the pride. But I think Singapore achieves it through um, rules. Mm. There's like two, There's. I guess what I'm saying is there's multiple methods to the same outcomes. I, I think that in general, though, like taking aside a race aside, like, oh, it's because Japan's a homogenous society. So, yeah, we should make America a homo homogenous society. Right, that's again. what some of you see that comment on the conservative yeah, side, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, there's just no guns and drugs in any of these places. In Singapore, Taiwan, or Japan, there's no guns or drugs. Very, very hard to find. Oh, and uh, violence is heavily, heavily, heavily punished. Yes, heavily punished. Hard punishment on guns, drugs, and crime, uh, violent crimes, like crazy punishment. So it's like, and you they study math a lot. You can't even imagine how different it is. So for people to be like, oh, geez, I went to Japan and it was different. I'm like, duh. Yeah, it's different on a trillion levels, guys. How you rank them on your pie chart distribution in terms of weighted metrics could be different. And of course, it's going to be dependent on your own personal bias as well. Uh, let's get into the comments section. Somebody said, America's filthy, disgusting, and fatter than anywhere else on earth. And a lot of people were arguing about that. I'll say this. America, in a way, Andrew, is such an exciting country, but it's so disgusting given the GDP per capita. Like, it's not really disgusting compared to everywhere on earth, but I think considering how rich America is and where it could be, for some reason, people are allowed to like explore their worst impulses, right? Um, somebody said, maybe if we set aside our differences and work together, and other people were more optimistic about America coming back from, these, from this downside. Mm. What do you think? Man, yeah. I mean, for sure we need to work together better. Yeah, I mean, some people think America's washed. Some people think we can come back. Well, who knows? I, I, it depends. Uh, the truth is, man, no leadership is going to save you. It's on your own personal agency, you and your own community. Um, somebody said, love it or leave it. Get out, Jimmy Kimmel. You, you want to be Japanese so bad? Go be that one song. I think I'm turning Japanese from the 90s, huh? Mm -hmm. I just wish that every time someone criticized America, which I think it's totally fine to criticize America, and you should. But you should also, in turn, do one thing that is supposed to help America. But we can't even decide on what's going to help America. Yeah, that's true. Um, Matt Walsh, who is a really big conservative commentator, said, isn't that funny that Jimmy Kimmel wants to prevent America from doing any of the things that would be necessary to clean it up because it's such a mess? But Jimmy and the left are soft on crime, and we need to come hard on crime. Dude, listen, I'll tell you this. Everybody's focusing on, like, they're like issues that they can strike points with in an election year. Everything matters. Culture matters. Uh, conviction rates matter. Just how we're t raising kids in school to like lean into or not lean into their impulses. It all matters. And, you know, like we said, Japan is incredibly different. Um, I'll say the two overlooked aspects that people don't understand, Andrew, in the West about East Asia in general is one shame and collectivism. Mm. I do not think they understand that shame and collectivism drive a lot of things. And yes, those things may have an impact on the suicide rate and things like that. And it kind of leads me, Andrew, to this Thomas Sowell quote that's really famous saying, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. Politics allows people to vote for the impossible, which may be one reason why politicians are often more popular than economists who keep reminding people that there is no free lunch. There are no solutions, only trade-offs. You try to get the best trade-off that you can. That's all you can hope for. Uh, so Listen, is it a, uh, is it a matter of trade-offs in America? I mean, it definitely feels that way. Obviously, if you raise taxes and give the poor more money, that's good in a way, but it also hurts other people. And then businesses and the rich people who run the businesses don't like it. And then they pull out. And what if they leave America and yada, 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 and all this stuff. So there's just trade-offs to everything, right? Yeah. I mean, ultimately, I think it's really interesting that Jimmy Kimmel said this. I, I don't think he had a lot of deep intellectual rigor behind this statement, but it's true. 
It is true. Like, if Japan is Disneyland, and you know how well-run Disneyland is, America's certainly like Six Flags. It's way more messy. You might find just like a pretzel or a churro randomly by the Ferris wheel. Well, you know what? If Jimmy Kimmel said this to go viral, to make a joke, obviously, but to also get people to think about what could be done in America and the state that America's in, then I guess that is what a comedian is supposed to do, right? They're supposed to bring up harsh truths in a funny way, but also have them stick with you. Yeah, I think that it is certainly is sticking. It's going along with the overall narrative right now. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, guys. Listen, man, I always say this. People just need to understand there's not really as much as people think there's always right things and wrong things, it, it, it's all gear boxes and like a watch or like a car and how the pistons fit with like the rotor and stuff like that. It's not really about, oh, is this a good rotor, a bad rotor? Is it the right rotor for that piston to keep the system flowing? Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time with the Hot Pop Boys, we out. Peace. Peace.